I tell people all the time, like, you got to be a solution seeker, right? Like, at, at all times, you got to be in the mindset of, like, okay, something arises, I got to find a solution, rather than, like, having a pity party and getting irritated and getting frustrated or getting sad or whatever the case is. I'm Zach Hall, and this is the Mindset Movement. All right, folks, we got a big, big treat for you guys today. We got the big cat in the studio here with us. Well, not with us, but he's on the screen. We're going to be talking to him. We're going to be interviewing him. This guy is probably one of the top in the industry when it comes to Shopify dropshipping. And we are super grateful to have him here on the show because it really doesn't get much better than this when it comes to Shopify dropshipping. Uh, we have Ernest Apes here with us. Or Ernest Apps. Is it Apps or Apes? Yep. Apps. <laughs> okay. Well, we want to make sure we hit that right. But, dude, thanks for coming on the show, man. I'm super pumped to get you on here because Shopify dropshipping, this is an industry that I know I've killed it in, and I've, I've been watching you for a long time, and, and you're one of the top guys out there. Not a lot of people know it, but you are probably at the tip top of the iceberg right now. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, the thing is, is that I've built my entire brand, and I guess you could say following and everything, you know, all organically. So I'm not out here like, you know, spending tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars a day like everyone else. But, you know, I've been able to build thousands of thousands of thousands of followers simply because like when people come into my ecosystem, they immediately recognize the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm real deal, you know? So yeah, it's been, it's been a good blessing, man. <laughs> Dude, I know, I know, I know. And uh, like, how long have you been in the drop shipping game? Because uh, a big thing that we see a lot of people say is like, you got to be in it for two years before you can really turn a dollar, turn a profit. In my instance, it, it literally took me two weeks to start profiting with, with drop shipping, but I kind of had an advantage on a lot of people because I ran Facebook ads for businesses for about a year and a half prior to starting. But for you, like how long have you actually been drop shipping with Shopify and how long did it take you to succeed with it? Yeah. So, you know, honestly, the answer is twofold, really. Um, so specifically, like, you know, actually taking the business serious. I started about four years ago, almost five years ago. Right. Um, so that's when I decided to really take it serious. The funny thing is that most people, they don't know this about me, but I actually heard about dropshipping and e-commerce all the way back in 2009, which is 10 years ago. Um, and that's where I actually yeah, like when a lot of these, like, you know, when, when dropshipping was just like a, this new thing and people were like, oh, it's not really going to work. You know, there's no way people going to really spend money on the Internet like that. Um, and it's funny because I didn't even hear about it from an online perspective. I literally got a flyer in the mail that invited me out to an event where a company was teaching it in person. <laughs> <laughs> Back when uh, AliExpress was 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 getting their start, um, I also remember hearing about that. I'm a little bit younger than you, so I didn't really take action on it. But uh, um, I, I've probably been drop shipping, not even on just Shopify's platform, but just across the board there, uh, maybe for about four years. But I really didn't start taking it seriously until about the past um, year, year and a half. That's good to know your background with it. That's again, that's probably a big attribute to why you're at the top of the pyramid right now, because you've been with the game. You may not have been in it, but you've been with the game at least since the start. So you yeah. right, oh, should be the best. Right? <laughs> yeah, because um, I told people, you know, essentially I was kind of like most people, and we talked about this briefly a little bit early before we got started, where, you know, I've seen all these different things, right? So uh, I did the e-com drop shipping, like I tried to do affiliate marketing, blogging, you know, so I was like trying to do all this different stuff. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and I didn't really know which direction I wanted to go. And then, you know, uh, I really, I never really committed to it. And, but when I made that decision to commit to like e-commerce and drop shipping, you know, it really, really took off like a rocket ship. I agree. Yep, that's kind of what I noticed too. When I and it was the same thing, same story with actual uh, drop shipping with Shopify. I was I was doing multiple different things. I was doing and I was doing my uh, marketing business. I marketed for car dealerships. I had a vehicle listing website service that I was listing cars online for dealerships, like a, like an auto trader or car gurus. I built one of those up. Um, I was using eBay for drop shipping. I was also doing, like I said, the Shopify drop shipping. I was doing Forex, stock trading. I mean, anything that was shiny that looked like it could make me a million dollars, I was doing that. <laughs> it wasn't until I actually cut everything else out and focused on the one thing, that's when everything blew up for me. And I think that's so um, key to succeeding in just about anything you want to do. Because if you want to succeed in anything, I think we can agree on this, you got to give it 110%. Like you got to be willing to 
spend those nights where you don't sleep, but you got to work through it. And, and when you're focusing on multiple different things there, um, you can't give everything a hundred percent. So you're never going to succeed with it. So we had a similar story there. I like that. But, uh, yeah, I've been training a lot of people with Shopify, dropshipping. I'm seeing your results. It's pretty crazy. But probably the most common question you're going to get asked, and I want to ask it here just to get it out of the way. How much money do you need to get started? Man, you know, the funny thing is like, the, like really, like I'm going to tell you about me personally, like how much I, like, I really genuinely like spent, okay? Um, and then I'll tell you like what I tell most people, okay? Uh, because I know most people aren't really willing to like, you know, grind and have that like, you know, uh, tenacity and just like ferociousness to uh, just take whatever resources they have and make the best of it. So me personally, I literally started with $12.50. That's how much it cost me, $12.50. Let, let me give some more context behind that too, right? So the reason why it only cost me $12.50 in the state of Virginia, that's where I live at, it cost $12.50 to register a business as a DBA, okay? So $12, all right? $12, I was like, all right, sign me up, Virginia. <laughs> so it cost me $12. And then on top of that, okay, so it's a little bit more than that. I, I put $25 towards paid advertising because when I started Shopify, and they still do this, give you $100 AdWords credit towards uh, running Google Ads, right? So $12.50, and twenty five dollars. Now, at the time when I started with Shopify, they've actually gotten a lot more. I guess you could say, just they don't have the longer trial periods. They used to have like thirty day and sometimes sixty day trial. So I was able to sign up for a thirty day trial. So um, you know, I had free, like thirty days for free. I could use Shopify. So I had the twelve dollars and fifty cent, the twenty five dollar AdWord credit, and uh, in my first month, I did thirty three hundred dollars in sales. And I just put all that money back into the business. I didn't touch any of it. And I kept flipping it every single month. So um, essentially, like I tell people, like really genuinely, like I literally built a million dollar portfolio of e com businesses with just $12.50. Like that's no hype, no BS. Like anyone that's ever followed me, like has watched me ascend through that entire process. Now, I, I, that's awesome. And, and the way I take the approach when I get asked this question is I, I come and tell people you need zero dollars. Like you literally need no money to start. And you're just kind of verifying that point. Thirty seven dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> no, it's nothing. Right. Yeah. But the way I explain it to people is I play the credit game really, really hard. So credit cards. Right. We're taught from birth that credit cards are, are bad. Don't get them. Twenty five percent interest rates. You're going to kill your financial life. Right. But if you're using credit cards to buy liabilities, yeah, that's definitely the case. But if you actually use them to buy assets, then it's good. They're, they're, they're actually a very good option. It's the easiest way to get access to money. So the way I teach people to do this is we go out, we get credit cards, and we use that stuff towards our um, initial startup. And another thing that, that really benefits us when we use credit cards with, with uh, Facebook ads or Google ads is... We, we get cards that are going to give us 3x or 4x points back per dollar spent on the platforms for online advertising. So we're making a tremendous amount of money just off of using a credit card on the app, ad platforms themselves, like Facebook or Google or anywhere you use them. And I, I, I would be Oh, yeah, to, absolutely right, man. I would be curious to know, like, obviously, we want to stretch the dollar and, and recycle it and make the money move so we can make money on the money multiple times. But is that something like you do? Do you guys... Do that over there um, with, with like the credit cards to get extra points back. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, between like points and like you know cash back, matching cash back. Like I know I got a Discover card uh, where they did uh, they matched the cash back. So instead of just uh, and this is one that I use on the personal side of things. Like everything like I'm doing has been transitioning all my businesses to run off credit cards because, like you said, uh, most people are taught, and it's only because they're just just negligent of the fact of like how to leverage credit cards the right way is the fact that, you know, you use it and then you pay it off and then you collect all the rewards in the process of that. So like you said, you can make money on your money and then like specific cars, like I know Chase has a car um, where they, I think it's either three X or even five X points possibly like pay that when you run paid ads. I can't remember the exact card off the top of my head. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yes. No, it's, actually, it's funny because like this, they even like further clarified that I'm really talking about. And this is a chase invitation right here that they sent me. 
<laughs> right there in the room. They're going to give me a $2,000 bonus uh, for signing up for their cashback bonus for signing up for their car. And they're going to give me one and a half percent cash back on all my purchases with that just particular business. So, limited? Uh, no, this is actually the uh, Inc. Preferred. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, this is the this is the business Inc. Preferred. So, that's you know, that, and that's the, that's the thing, man. Like, we're real deal with this stuff. Like, whenever I say something, like, you know, people are like, oh, that might not be true. Like, I got the invitation right here, guys. It's real. <laughs> that's a good part of you. Um, the top two cards when it comes to, like, the Facebook or the Google ad platforms to get money back on your money are that card right there, the Chase Inc. Business Preferred, or uh, actually the American Express Gold Business Card. I don't know if you played around with that one at all. But you actually no, won. I was using a, a different American Express one, but uh, I know last year it got like seven thousand dollars cash back. Just now, and I'm not even talking about points. If I would have done points, it would have been way more. Like you said, like uh, it would have been significantly more. But that's the cool thing. Like whether you want to do points and cash those out different ways with like Amazon cards or like flights or hotels and stuff like that, you get way more bang for your buck when you do it like that versus cash back. But yeah, you're right, man. Like I haven't just for the credit cards. I haven't paid for a single flight my entire life. I don't pay for hotel rooms. Um, my my girl likes going to Olive Garden all the time. We haven't paid for a single real dinner because we use the points to get um, the actual gift cards for Olive Garden. So I mean, we're we're pretty much paying for our whole life just on the <laughs> points from the credit cards. And and people think you got to come into this space and you got to make a million dollars with 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 drop shipping. When in reality is you don't really need to do that. You just need to make enough sales so you can get money back on your points and you can still live an insane life. Like most businesses, oh, yeah. most businesses, a lot of people talk about if you're breaking even, you're losing. Like this is the one business in my opinion where if you're breaking even, you're still doing pretty good because you're making a lot of money on the actual <laughs> points back. But uh oh like yeah that you're doing that too. Because a lot of people in this industry they they don't realize that because people still have that, like you said, negligent thought in the back of their mind that credit cards are Bro, bad. like <laughs> seriously like if People, people, somebody, whoever's listening to this, it's like, think of it like this. Like, let's say hypothetically, like you scale a business to doing a hundred thousand dollars, right? And you're breaking even and you got a rewards card. It's not uncommon to get 2% cash back. We're talking about something very like common in the industry uh, in the credit card world, but 2% cash back on a, on a hundred K is $2,000 a month. That's $24,000 a year. That's somebody's full-time job. And we're yeah. just talking about all you're doing is spending money, you're paying it all. Because with dropshipping, yeah. you use the customer's money to pay for everything. So like, you can literally make a full time salary. It's three percent of the the ink preferred, and then it's four percent of the business gold. And I'm not the best in in, in the industry at it, but I'm sure there's even better things than that. Like you can recycle it multiple times if you want. MS it, manufacture spend. You can get even more. Um, points back on on your points, but hey, hey, don't you be going dropping those knowledge bombs about the and you to spend. That's something nobody really knows about. Play <laughs> that game. But, uh, okay, we went over that. We went over, like, the spend, like, what it takes. Um, I think we're on the same page with that. It takes pretty much no money. Just what My point that I'm trying to get at there is you don't need any real money. You just need access to the money. You get access to oh, yeah. the money. Like, you look at these top players in the world, like, uh, like people that like Warren Buffett, for example, the guy probably buys a new apartment complex every single hour. Like he doesn't buy that with cash. He's just using OPM. Same thing with Trump. Like everybody thinks that's that's a fun, controversial subject. Everybody likes to talk about. I'm not political either way. But uh, like he's got like a seven billion dollar portfolio. But he doesn't actually buy this stuff with actual cash. He's buying it with other people's money. He's taking out interest only loans. Right. So. People think he's making all this money, he should pay all these taxes, but he's not actually making all that money, right? He's he, he's borrowing the money and making money on the bank's money. And he's making mm -hmm. pennies compared to what he's actually showing, right? But, and it's the same thing with what we're talking about here is why I'm bringing up that point. You just, you don't need real money. You just need other people's money to use. And that's a key to succeeding in, in just about any business. But, yeah, and the great thing about like econ versus like real estate, because like even to get access to like the bigger money on real estate, like you gotta have like a good business plan, like you gotta have like properties in mind that you're gonna be acquired. You gotta have conversations with the bank to get the, the money, get everything. Like with dropshipping, like literally, you can start by the end of the week. <laughs> you know, it's literally like you have execution on the information that you receive. So yeah, it's a beautiful thing. 
That's good. So for, for your <laughs> is, uh, is drop shipping, is Shopify drop shipping the end of the game for you, or is this only the beginning? No, so this is only the beginning, man. So my my ultimate goal is to really build up a big portfolio of, uh, you know, drop shipping stores uh, that I actually, you know, start to expand out and dig in deep in specific niches uh, to build a hundred million dollars a year in, uh, in revenue that I do. That's good. And I, I think you can do it. Like when you, when you actually know how to run the ads, like I know you do, you can do it. It seems, it seems like crazy. Like usually if it sounds too good to be true, it is, but knowing what we know in this industry, it's actually possible. If you want to put in the work to do it, you can do it. It's, it's insane the potential with Shopify, with drop shipping, and, and I see so many people looking past this because it's the current trend. They want to try and find the next thing because they think it's too late. But what the Gary Vee says the best, don't focus on what's next. Focus on the current, like right now. That's, that's good. It's really possible to do that, and I, I really think you're going to be able to do it. But why do you think 99% of the people actually fail when they're coming into the Shopify space? Um, you know, quite honestly, like it, it's like with most things. Like It's not, even, it's not a Shopify thing. Honestly, it's a you thing, like at the end of the day, because whether it's Shopify, whether it's like you want to become a, a, a lawyer and run your own law firm, uh, whether it's like you want to start a franchise, whether you want to start a lawnmower business, like statistically across the board, 80 percent of businesses fail, like statistically speaking. Right. So with that being said, it's, you know, when people look at like the whole Shopify thing, because like, you know, obviously we get asked that question a lot. Like, why are there so many people winning or failing with Shopify? Like, why is there only a couple of people that's actually having success? Well, it's the same thing in regular business. <laughs> it's just no different. The laws of what it takes to be successful running a Shopify business apply no matter what kind of business you're running. You got to fail. Exactly. You got to fail. You have to fail before you can succeed. It's a universal law. So um, I, I agree with you there. Like so many people drop off the wagon before they really get started because they're not comfortable with failure because we're not taught to be comfortable with failure. And that's exactly why I named this podcast The Mindset Movement because I, I'm trying to make a movement around the, the fact that the mindset, and it's so cliche to say it, but your mindset is, is literally the most important part. Of, of anything you're going to do. And it's not just Shopify. It's not just drop shipping. It's, it's any business you're going to get into. Um, even if it's not a business, like if you want, if you're working a job, that's fine. Um, just whatever you're doing, if you want to succeed at it, whether it's your own business, a job, a sport, it's all up in your mind. It's a mindset. If you don't have the right tools up here, right? If you can't win the war inside your head, you're never going to win it out in the real world. So that's why everybody's failing at this because they're not comfortable with failing. Right? They drop off when, when it going gets tough. Like Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Yep. So, and you will get punched in the face a lot of times, no matter what. It's like, it doesn't matter who your coach is, who you're learning from, uh, like what you do. At the end of the day, something's always going to happen. Like I can tell you, like, it, it, like it's just something's going to happen. It's inevitable, right? No matter. And again, it doesn't matter what kind of business that you're running. It's inevitable that something is just going to happen. Um, cause there's things that we can't control. Like I always bucket things and like the things I can't control and the things I can't control, like market shifts, Facebook algorithm changes, Google updates to a new interface. I can't freaking find the buttons. Like <laughs> uh product gets priced incorrectly. Hey, there's this whole thing going on with China right now where all the prices are getting raised. Everyone's freaking out. Like you can't control like country laws or things that happen in the, in the <laughs> tariff. Yeah. Like that's, it'll, it'll adjust, but honestly it's adjusting for inflation. So it looks like the price is going up, but realistically we're going to be making the same amount of money. It's just like it, when, when, when the minimum wage gets raised in a state, right. The uh, cost of a gallon of milk goes up. Sure. It's costing more on paper, but in theory, it's still the same value. So that's what's happening with China right now. It's funny you bring that yeah. up. That and the thing is, is that, you know, just getting back to the principal side of things, like it doesn't matter. There's just always going to be stuff that you can't control. So the challenge between, you know, the people that win and the people that succeed is that we embrace it, we see it, and then we just figure out a way to push through it to actually come up with the solution. And, um, you know, we were kind of talking about this earlier before we got started uh, before, but like I tell people all the time, like you got to be a solution seeker. Right. Like at, at all times, you got to be in the mindset of like, OK, something arises. I got to find a solution rather than like having a pity party and getting irritated and getting frustrated or getting sad or whatever the case is. Just like, all right, here's a punch. 
Let me come up with a solution. And you got to be yeah. quick to act on that. Ernest, Ernest was saying, this was going to happen if I did this, right? But it didn't, right? And then they want to place the blame on you. But in reality, it, it doesn't matter who your mentor is. Like I said in my last show with uh, with Mike, there, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if um, Jeff Bezos is my mentor, right? If I'm looking to make the next Amazon, it doesn't matter if he's my mentor. I'm not going to be able to make that happen until I experience the failures myself. It's just a universal law. It's the way it works. You got to fail. You have to fail. It doesn't matter if you have the best mentor in the world at what you're doing. It definitely helps. Don't get me wrong. You, you got to have a good mentor. You got to have good knowledge in the beginning because when you get punched in the face, you can't afford to spend any more of your time and money learning. It's important to have the right tools up here. Otherwise, you're not going to dig yourself back out of the hole. But you got to experience the failures yourself before you can truly win at it. Um, and, and, and going back to the, the failures and, and like you're saying there, like it's, it's, it's good to problem solve. I want to ask you this question because you're talking about a hundred million dollar portfolio and sales. Um, do you think you should 100% automate your business? Because this is a big thing that I see a lot of starting entrepreneurs talk about. Like they think they're going to, they, they, they read online that the average millionaire has seven streams of income, right? So <laughs> what they want to do is they want to start out, right? They're, they're like, I'm going to, I'm going to nose to the grindstone for the next five years. I'm going to start businesses. I'm going to start seven businesses. I'm going to completely automate them all. And I'm going to be a millionaire. That's not how it works. In your opinion, do you think you should 100% automate your business? Well, personally, for me, um, I don't believe in 100% automation. Um, yep. Like, because at the end of the day, like, if again, like, don't listen to me, number one. Like, if I say something, like, go out and do your due diligence yourself, right? But if you look at, like, the most successful businesses and the most successful business owners, no matter what the industry is, again, because I'm talking about principles, like a lot of this stuff is congruent, guys. Like, but if you look, like how many of them really have completely walked away and stepped away from their business? Right. So I don't like to refer to like like automation as a hundred percent type of thing. I like to use the uh, phraseology like semi-automate, right? Yep. So I consider like yeah, I consider my like drop shipping businesses like semi-automated because I have teams of VAs that they manage the day-to-day -day stuff that like eat up a lot of your time, like the customer service, order fulfillment, and okay. you know, listing products, more research, you know, stuff like that. Like, you know, it takes a lot of time. So I'm not doing any of those things. But what I do is I go in and I oversee what's happening on a regular basis. Now, typically for me, on average, I want to say it's maybe one to two hours per day. Um, you know, that I'm going in and kind of checking on these different things. But again, it's not 100 percent. It's still two hours per day that I just go in and check to make sure things are happening. Sometimes it could be a couple of days I'll go in and look at things. Um, and sales are just still rocking and rolling, coming in, things of that nature. But the main thing is I just want to get rid of, uh, to your point, Zach, the misconception of 100 percent automated uh, no matter what, I don't care how sexy the tool is. I don't care how amazing your SOPs are, standard operating procedures. At the end of the day, like you still got a little bit of something, even with real estate. Like I, I hang around a lot of people that are crushing it in real estate. They've got multi-million dollar portfolios. Like you still got to, at some point, be in contact with your property manager, make sure the deposits are coming into your account. Even if you do it once a month, that's still, in my opinion, not 100% automated because you still got to go in there and actually take a look at stuff. You got to be there. If you, the, the problem that I noticed, and I ran into this myself with Shopify, because that was my mindset starting out. I like when I was first becoming an entrepreneur. It's it's the generic cross the board. Everybody thinks that, right? And that's what I thought too. I'm I'm going to start this business. I'm going to get a great mentor. I'm going to learn everything I know about it. I'm going to make a ton of money, which I did. Not bragging, but make a ton of money. I'm going to put it on automation and go to the next thing, right? And I tried that. And the problem that happens is like I say it like every single week and every person I talk to, it seems like the definition of business is problem solving. And when you're not there to see the problems arising in your business, then your business is going to go under. And that's exactly what happened to me. And the big problem that, that I, I faced when I did that was pay, I didn't have the PayPal set up correctly with my drop shipping store and PayPal ended up holding $25,000 on me and I never got it all back. And, uh, you know, like if, if that never would have happened if I was there to actually foresee this happening, like if I was there to actually see that they're telling me, hey, make sure you send your tracking numbers over here so we know that you're actually sending your products out. Um, like, you just if, if you 100 percent automate, you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot bad. So 
Yeah. And the worst case scenario, like you still like, again, no matter what business it is, just like go in there, you know, poke in there, make sure things are happening. And like, even if you hire, um, now again, you can systematize things. You can put automation towards whatever it is that you're pursuing, but you know, you still got to be in there checking, checking to make sure stuff gets executed properly. Right. It's, uh, it's working on your business rather than working in your business. Yeah, so that, exactly. That's the main point here we're trying to say, um, you got to work in your business in the beginning until you can get the ball rolling to where you can start automating, bringing on VAs, like, don't get us wrong here. Automation is, is good. It's kind of key to succeeding. Yeah, you got that right. It definitely is a key to, it's a key to scaling. Like, you know, not, not necessarily succeeding. Cause me personally, I could be, I think anybody can really go from zero to a million dollars a year and not have to have like a massive team in order to do it. Like if you want to like grind and put in the grunt work and take full responsibility of the whole shebang of everything that has to go in your business, I think that you can, you know, honestly, well, personally I did it. So I know you can do it. So uh, you don't have to have a big, big team to do that. But what I've noticed, again, part of uh, me personally, because I know I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. Um, I don't come from a background of like, you know, amazing people that are crushing it in business or in life. So I have to go out and study individuals and or like go to events, go to masterminds, surround myself with people that are winning at a high level to, to get what that looks like. And so what I've noticed specifically over the last uh, especially like the last 18 to 24 months is the fact that the people that are doing multiple seven figures a year, like eight figures up, like the people that are doing multiple seven figures a year consistently and the people that are doing eight figures and up, they have a team, they have systems. Like they are not doing this by themselves. Like they are deep, deep rooted with having really solid teams and systems that's allowing them to gain more of the market share in the specific industries it is that they're in, whether it's drop shipping, whether it's e-com, uh, whether it's like a uh, service-based business, whether it's a digital product, people that's doing multiple seven figures, eight figures and up, they got teams and they got systems, okay? You're right, because you're right, you can't do it on your own. It's, it's impossible. A lot of people, you know, think they're the biggest badass in, in the world in their mind, right? They're a legend in their own mind, but you, you can't do it on your own. And uh, you, you got to humble yourself out. The sooner, the better um, before you get kicked in the teeth, because the world will kick you in the teeth when, when, you, when you finally come and realize that you're not everything that you thought you were. You got to humble yourself out and you got to be willing to accept help from other people because that is so key. Like you can't do it on your own. And that's that's important. Getting other people on your team, getting some VAs, automating that stuff out. Um, and I think I think you're I think you're right over what I was saying. It's not important to succeed. Like I could succeed all day on my own. But if I actually want to scale, you got to have people on your side. And you got to have people working with you. Right. I agree with you on that. Now. I know you, this is how I got in touch with, with Ernest here. He's, he's got one of the top, um, if not the top, uh, Facebook group for, for Shopify dropshipping specific. Well, not even just Shopify. It's, it's pretty much dropshipping across the board. And he's got about 25,000 members in there, maybe 30,000 members in there at the time of recording here. I, I know it grows exponentially every single day, it seems like. But a uh, really, really sharp guy. He does do a course. He does mentorships and everything. And I wanted to say that before I ask you this next question, because me and you, we, we both do mentorships for people, but how important is a mentorship in the beginning? Like, I, I don't want this, I don't want people to think this is a biased opinion because we're going to have the same answer here. Um, but I just wanted to say that beforehand, but in your opinion, how important are mentorships before you start? Are, are they super important or are people just trying to scam and make extra money off you? Well, no, man. Like, you know, the thing is, is that, having a mentor and or like, you know, here's the thing before I even give more context behind like my direct answer, right? If we look at, you know, let's just say like professional athletes, right? If you, you look at the Michael Jordan, right? Like Michael Jordan is only Michael Jordan because of who was behind Michael Jordan, right? In the beginning, it was his dad, right? Like, yeah. like Michael Jordan didn't know, he didn't just wake up one day and just all of a sudden start learning how to dribble basketball, learning how to, you know, shoot a, shoot a jump shot correctly, or, you know, learn how to, you know, play defense as aggressive as he did. Right. And then even as he ascended into like the NBA, like most people think that it was Phil Jackson that was pushing Michael Jordan to the next level, but actually behind the scenes, Michael Jordan ended up hiring a guy by the name of Tim, Tim Grover. Tim Grover is the person that created the Michael Jordan that we see. So Michael Jordan had a coach on the court, but he also had a coach that was helping him from the mental capacity and from the strengthening 
uh, his body capacity in order to ascend to become the person that you guys know was Michael Jordan. So most people don't even know that. Most, most people just know like Bill Jackson because that was his coach. But behind the scenes was actually Tim Grover is the person that is actually responsible for the Michael Jordan that we know. And then also most people don't know that Tim Grover was also responsible for Kobe Bryant. So he was the person that helped Kobe Bryant. And uh, he's been responsible for tons of other uh, amazing athletes that we just is like, oh, my God, these guys are superstars. They're rock stars. They're champions like Dwayne Wade. Um, you know, again, Kobe Bryant, yep. Michael Jordan, but they, they all had Tim Grover in their corner who was helping them ascend to that next level in that arena specifically, right? So again, if we look at, you know, uh, just coming back to our ecosystem and arena, you know, one of the things I just had someone reach out to me and say is just like, uh, she said, uh, you know, my husband, he doesn't believe in, you know, uh, spend money to make money. And I was just like, well, whether your husband believes in that or not, at the end of the day, you have to get educated, <laughs> right? Like, you don't go through any uh, society, okay? Let's break it down all the way to like how we learn anything, right? We don't, there's no society that says, you know what? Just let your baby grow up. Uh, they can figure out math. They can figure out English on their own. There's no requirement to learn anything. You can just, you're, you'll figure it out. You know, there's a lot of yeah. free information out there. You just, you just figure it out. It that does, doesn't exist, <laughs> right? Yeah. And or the opposite side, right? Now let's talk about the teacher side aspect, right? There's no teacher that shows up and just like, oh, you know, I just love kids so much. I don't have to worry about bills. I'll sleep on the street. Um, I'll sleep in a sleep bag under a tent. Like, I don't need money. Like, you know, I'll just teach people for free, right? It doesn't exist, okay? And again, I know that might sound a little extreme, right? But at the same sense, like as we ascend as adults, if you want to say you want to be a business owner, the thing that you got to do is you got to get educated on business and specifically in whatever arena that you're pursuing, you need to go find the people that are succeeding at what you want to do. Right. And so now that we talk about like mentorship, absolutely. Like personally for me, like I have mentors in multiple areas of business that I want to grow in. Like I got a, a mentor for email marketing. I have a mentor for digital products. I have a mentor for advertising. I have a mentor specifically for Shopify. Like I have mentors for every area that I want to actually grow in. And I go and find the best people that are in that. And I pay them to help me expedite my success and or help to increase my learning curve with what it is that I'm pursuing. You're right. You look at the top people, you look at the top people in the world, um, they all had mentors. Mark Zuckerberg had Peter Thiel. Mark Zuckerberg had Peter Thiel. Now, Mark Zuckerberg is one of the richest people in the world. Like, everybody has to have a mentor starting out. You look at the guys at the top of the ladder, Ernest here, for example, top of the Shopify dropshipping ladder, he has mentors. You got to have a mentor. I agree with you. It's super, super important starting out and not, not even just starting out like long term. If you want to continue to succeed, you got to continue to keep learning. And you got to keep surrounding yourself with winners. Otherwise, you're going to start to plateau. You're going to you're going to drop off a little bit, and you're going to you're going to start to flatline. So yeah. let's 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 get in here to the next one. Uh, I agree. You got to have mentor. Got to have mentor. How much time a day right now? And I, you already hit it on it a little bit here, but just real quickly, how much time a day are you spending on your business? Man, well, here's here's the thing, right? Um, I'll answer that with the respect that everybody has different goals, right? So if your goal is just to make $100,000 a year, um, you know, you might just set everything up, you know, get it semi-automated like I talked about and just be on chill mode and that's, you know, you're good with that. But if you got a big vision, <laughs> big goals that you want to achieve, again, you heard me t talk about like the nine figures a year, that, uh, that nine figures isn't going to be made with a mediocre work ethic at the end of the day, right? Um, and just recognize that work is required. Um, to achieve like whatever it is that you want to achieve. So knowing that, knowing that Ernest, is, has, Ernest has to be self-funded through his own personal, like, you know, again, work ethic and capital and, you know, things of that nature. I don't have, you know, relationships and I didn't grow up from a family that has like, you know, uh, any wealth or anything. So I have to literally go out and grind for every single dollar that comes in to continue to ascend uh, you know, month over month, year after year, right? And make make good decisions along the way. So for me, that answer is going to be a lot different than like, you know, probably like the average person. Um, so for me, like I'm working like crazy. You know, I'm talking about, you know, some days are 18, 20 hour days. There's literally just even, uh, you know, last couple of weeks, I literally worked like two, three days in a row. Right. Yeah, and that doesn't mean just money, just how successful do you want to be? And it's going to require work. Yeah, bro. That's, uh, that's all good stuff, man. Um, I'm excited, bro.
<laughs> and kind of going back a little bit to uh, what you were talking about there before with, with uh, Tim Grover mentoring Michael Jordan and Kobe and Dwayne Wade and, and many other people there. I read that book. It's a good book. It's uh, it's Unstoppable by Tim Grover. That's, that's a pretty important book to, to read. Everybody talks about Think and Grow Rich and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We're going to link it down there in the description. But it's definitely a book that you should look into getting because a lot of people see the player Kobe and they see the player Michael Jordan, but they don't see the mindset that these guys have. And that's what that book teaches. Um, I don't know if that's where you were maybe getting that from or if you actually just truly knew the stories of, of, of their um, background and everything. But he's well, yeah, it was a you know combination between that and, you know, the fact of like, you know, mentorship, because like, you know, some people are just like, oh, you know, I don't really think I should have a mentor. Or I don't really need help yeah. or guidance or or nothing like that. And like, you know, uh, again, like I know you got mentioned Gary B, but like, you know, I, I'm I'm very controversial with a lot of stuff that he teaches. But like like one of the things is he's he even says, like, you don't have to have a mentor. He never had a mentor, which quite honestly really isn't true. Like he talks about his dad, right. Like he's talked about his dad a lot and how he's learned from his dad and the principles of like work ethic and stuff. So I'm like, at the end of the day, like indirectly, whether you want to say you had him as a mentor or not, like he was your mentor, <laughs> you know, so. Same thing. I think Gary Vee is just a very good, genuine person. Like, I like what he does. He, he constantly is preaching free content, free content, free content. Like, he he's so far ahead of the trends. Like, if you watch him, like, he knows, like, what's about to like, happen. Like, he called Facebook happening. He called Google Ads back in the early 2000s. Like, he, he's calling LinkedIn. Like, right now, it's, what, June 28th of 2019 when we were recording this and and a couple months ago or a year ago or whatever he's already calling LinkedIn to be the next Facebook and and uh, if you kind of watch the trend that LinkedIn's doing and they're they're doing the same thing Facebook did back in 07 08 so uh, LinkedIn's probably going to be the new platform so um, I, I agree with him on some stuff but like when it comes to getting a mentor and everything uh, I don't know if my opinion is necessarily above his because he's obviously worth about a thousand <laughs> times what I am. Like he's a lot more successful, but I would agree with you. Like you got to have a mentor. If you're, if you're trying to succeed in a business, you got to have a mentor. If you don't have the yeah. knowledge, you literally have nothing. So and you know what's funny is um, that's cool that you brought up the whole like trend thing. And here's the thing that's going to happen. Like you can be your own Gary V in your niche. Um, the reason why, like, and I personally like believe this in terms of like being able to forecast stuff because I've worked on like contracts for like multi-billion dollar companies. I've forecasted certain numbers or certain things ever happening and like those things actually happen. It's not because like, you know, you have to be some overarching genius or like this like magic man or something like that. It's like when you're in the game with a high level of intensity, like you can start to see like the patterns that that start that are going to potentially arise and be able to like really have a true visualization of that. But I can tell you when you're sitting on the sidelines or you're not really like in the game, like in the game, because obviously like, you know, again, if you follow Gary at any, by any means, like, you know, like he's like the work ethic is just like an understatement in terms of like how much that guy like puts in. Right. Um, and so like, if you do that and, you know, I 100% know that my work ethic is on par uh, with what he puts in, like yep. you have the ability to be able to do that. Like, and so like, you just got to really, really get in the game and get honed in on what it is that you're doing, especially when it comes to like e-commerce and drop shipping, if that's something that you're learning about, um, because it's like, you don't have to play guessing games. The reason why we have such a high level of confidence with e-commerce and drop shipping is because like, we just do it so much. Like we're in the game. We know like, okay, like Facebook algorithm, like made a shift, like here's the next best thing I should probably do. Even if there's no content on how to do it, it's because like we're in the game. We know how to make a, make a pivot. <laughs> and that's another thing right there that I, I wanted to bring it up and I wasn't sure how we're going to get on this subject, but two <laughs> look at, this is something I wanted to ask you about come September, right? Um, September of 2019, in our time here, maybe not when you're listening to it in your time, but at least in our time, uh, September of 2019, there's another big algorithm change coming to Facebook where they're going to push and force everybody to go on CBOs, right? You can't do the traditional marketing that we've been doing. You're going to have to do the CBO approach. Um, I've already started pivoting and in doing CBOs um, since I found out about this because I want to know how to do it um, before we're actually forced to do it. I don't know if you really knew whether this was happening, probably. But uh, there's so many people complaining about it. And, and at first I was one of them. But then I'm thinking to myself, well, Facebook's an auction bidding platform, right? So the highest bidder usually wins. Uh, not, not entirely, but 
for the sake of this conversation, the highest bidder wins. And I'm thinking to myself, like, if everybody's complaining about this, we're going to get a lot of people to drop off the platform because they're not willing to pivot. They're not willing to switch to Facebook's new algorithm. So I was one of them. And then I started to take a, take a step back and look at it. And uh, like the people that aren't actually shifting with the market and, and growing with um, the changes, um, those are the ones that aren't going to win. And the guys like us that are, that are going to stick with it, we're the ones that are going to going to win massively in the end because we're willing to do that. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, man. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, and again, we, we talked about this earlier, right? Like solution seeking at all times. There's going to be an algorithm change. It's very been very publicly stated. It's everyone in the know-how of like running ads knows about it. So there's no mystery or guessing game. So if you don't make a pivot, you can't cry wolf because you knew it was coming. Like you're listening right now, you knew it was coming. <laughs> so, and if you're listening to this later, like uh, at another time, maybe 2023, uh, it came. All right. <laughs> yeah, some of the people that are looking back on this, listening to us right now, they're like, "Dude, these guys were right." Like, it did happen. That did happen. Like right now, we don't 100 percent know what's going to happen. We're just forecasting it, right? Because it hasn't happened in our time yet. But the people that are, most people that are probably listening to this are listening to it way down the line and now they actually are looking at it like these guys were right so it's simple with facebook ads too like right now they have a they have a question mark up in the top right you just click on that and they're literally telling you the changes that are coming to the platform and they'll update mm -hmm. you on a weekly basis that they do um so that's all good and another thing we're going to talk about here shopify a very controversial subject that uh, i'd love your input on here is when you're starting general or niche or single product like, which one do you think you should start with? It's another comment. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I'm not sure in terms of, like, your perspective or whatever, but here's the thing that always happens no matter what model someone goes with, right? And as this internet marketing cliche, I think it's been around almost since, like, the dawn of, like, the industry of internet marketing has arisen, um, is that the riches are in the niches. <laughs> right on that. I'll, I'll tell you my view, and I'll let you go into it. So we kind of, you know, where I'm at. So we didn't talk on this before. I believe you should start general at first. I, I don't think you should, just because you like something specific like sports apparel, right? You shouldn't start with sports apparel because you don't know if that's going to sell. So my argument here would be start general at first. Start general so you can, you can do multiple different products in different industries so you can find what works. And then when you have the information and you know what actually works, you said you don't know what works until you know. Once you have the information, you have a product that's selling, then take it niche specific because you can, that opens up a whole bigger window there for, for opportunity when you go niche specific with single product store because you can actually start um, doing SEO and everything for your store, like right, growing backlinks, getting yourself plugged with other websites. You can start growing a brand name. Um, your retention rates, everything are going to be increased on your store. You're going to have higher conversions. Your traffic's going to be more valuable. Um, long term, general doesn't. It works, but you're not going to be capitalizing and making the most amount of money. You should start general. In my opinion, you could have different, but but you start general. Once you have the information, you and you know what's selling, go niche with that store. And then my approach is after two to three months, I, I sell off to a different company who pools companies together and they sell off to big companies. But uh, so I'm not looking to do long term stores anyway. But uh, that's that's kind of the way I look at it. Start general, go niche. Yeah. And, you know, the beauty about what happens when you have a, a niche specific store, like all the stuff that you talked about, like um, the only thing I would potentially add is like people want to know, like, especially when they look into e-com, they're like, well, you know, why would somebody buy from me versus like, you know, Amazon or Walmart? Like, you know, they you might be somebody that might be like that thinking of that nature. And the thing is, is that like, you know, when you go into a niche specific market, like you can literally brand yourself as the go to resource and industry expert around that versus like Amazon's not going to do that. Walmart's not going to do that. Target, Home Depot, Lowe's, whoever, Wayfair, they're not going to do that. Um, and so you have the ability to be able to earn your customers trust through different ways. Right. And that's just one of the main critical ways that you can be able to do that um, is to to help separate yourself from everybody else in that specific market that you're actually going after. So mm -hmm. and the way I the way I think that opinion based here, there's two two reasons why I think people are going to buy from you specifically um, over Amazon. And, and the first one's just real simple impulse. You're driving impulse. So people are just going to jump, jump the gun there and assume that 
you may not be the best price in the market, but you're at least going to be competing with Amazon prices and uh, they just buy from you at that point. Another point is uh, I like to look at frequency or I think I talked to you a little bit about earlier, the mere exposure effect. So psychologically, this is the way sales works. When, when people see um, just about anything, like the news does this, music does this, TV shows, everything does this, like my podcast, this is how this is going to blow up and I'm going to get a lot of viewers on this. Like when you see something multiple times over again, whether you have a positive or a negative experience with it, just as long as you're seeing it continuously and you're going to actually start to like it, you're going to resonate with it and people are going to prefer you, you're, you're going to, re, you're going to prefer um, what you're seeing more. So people aren't going to buy from you the first time. I mean, like your Facebook ads, or your Google, well, more Facebook, not necessarily Google, but People aren't going to buy from you the first time. It's going to take five, six, seven, eight points of contact before people are actually going to jump the gun and take action on you. So I think people buy from you because they see your brand name multiple times. So psychologically, they're thinking to themselves that you're actually a reputable, good brand that they can trust. So they would rather buy from you, even if they know Amazon might be cheaper. My theory on it, at least. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, you know, it's one multiple reasons why people will buy from you but definitely you know and that's a critical like you know sales and marketing uh thought process that's even taught from a scholastic aspect like that's commonly known is that it takes seven to eight touch points with anyone that's a cold uh individual or customer or potential customer in order for you yeah. to just build that like trust factor uh with people to feel comfortable about your brand and then wanting to do business with you and, you know, that's not to say that you won't get those people that will definitely come to your site one time and convert. Like, you'll have tons of people. Like, again, I specifically focus on high ticket e com. So, my average order value is like, you know, it can be anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000 per purchase. Um, I got a product that's like taking off this week, $1,400 per transaction, right? That's coming in like every day. Um, you know, so the thing is that, again, uh, you know, some of those people, like, it's, it's a one time touch. Like, they come in. They see exactly what they've been looking for. Now, specifically, I run traffic uh, only on search engines. I don't actually use social media for high tickets specifically. Um, you can use it for retargeting, but definitely cold traffic is it's going to cost you way more money to get that conversion versus, um, you know, actually getting in front of someone that's literally gone to a search engine and said, hey, I want an Amati 60-inch electric fireplace. That's somebody that knows exactly what they want. Now they're just trying to figure out who they want to get it from. Like, that's the person I want. Like, I want the person that's at the bottom of the funnel. <laughs> it comes with the sales part like i was saying there that's that's more social so that makes more sense with the social aspect of it because these aren't people that are actually looking to buy that item necessarily right then um but when you do search engine driven like google ads or bing ads um people are actually taking to the search engines they're typing in what they want and they're looking to buy it so uh, when it comes to like the sales and the psychology of the back end there that makes sense with 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 the social aspect of it when you're actually trying to sell people um, yeah. And it doesn't matter just in general, like it on average, like, especially like with the, whether it's like a digital product, physical product, um, it doesn't matter. And that's the thing I tell people a lot too, in terms of like principles. The thing is, is that once you start learning the fundamental principles of what creates success in one arena versus another, like I was even just thinking about this, like this morning, like, you know, on how like uh, business wise, like I'm literally like, as I'm like, for example, I'm running a workshop this weekend. And the same exact principles I'm going to be sharing on optimizing your site for conversions, you could literally go to any of my sites selling services or digital products. And I have the same exact principles. Like I'm, I'm like literally like the same exact stuff. The only difference is like how I position it, but it's the same strategy. Like, you know, the same t strategy in terms of brand, same strategy in terms of like offers, uh, same type of urgency, scarcity, um, you know, we're not even going to go deep into a lot of that stuff. I, I don't think today that's too much uh, for a podcast, but uh, at least for, for how much we've been already talking anyways. But yeah, man, like the principles that you'll learn, like when you start to find those fundamental things, like they're universal. And these are the same things that Walmart are doing, the same things that Apple is doing. Like we're not like, you. do you honestly really think when Apple rolls out an iPhone that they really only have a thousand that they could have made? Biggest company in the world, they can only make a thousand? No, they do that because, you know, they're going to go run to the store. And you're going to get one because you don't want to wait two months. That's why you're going to go get one of the thousand that are available. Limited time only, right? So yeah, those strategies, 
And the funny thing is like, some people are uncomfortable with that. You know, when they start learning about marketing and sales, you're like, Oh, well, I'm not really telling the truth or, you know, I'm not really being honest. But the thing is, is that you have to motivate people to take action. And it's not a, a, a thing of like not being honest or dishonest or nothing. It's just that you have to create a, a psych, psychological and, and like motivating factor for people to want to take action. So again, no one would ever say to Tim Cook, who I think Tim Cook's still the CEO of Apple. Is he still the CEO of Apple? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and if he's not, oh well. <laughs> Whoever the CEO of Apple is, you know, no one's gonna go to him and be like, you know what, you're a liar, you're embellishing, you're 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 telling the marketplace fake stories because you guys can make more than a thousand iPhones. No, no one's ever gonna do that, right? Because it's just that's what they position in their market, that's what they do. Um, and as long as you follow up on whatever it is that you say you're actually gonna do, so if you sell someone on expedited shipping, like process it with expedited shipping. Like don't like swindle people, like get them to pay you more money and then they'll like do the thing you say you're going to do. Um, or, you know, if you have a limited quantity, uh, you know, offer, like don't process the order and not ship the product, like silly stuff like that. I know we shouldn't have to talk about it, but we got to talk about it. <laughs> so, yeah. As long as you're following up on the offer and the fulfillment of what you say you're going to do, whatever strategy that you implement in the process of that is totally fine. Yeah. And I would say that, it's again, it's kind of like a white lie. Like you're, 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 you're not hundred percent telling the truth. Like I do this and, and it may be bad. Some people may look at it as bad, but like I'll say limited time offer or, Hey, there's only 10 left in stock, but I don't necessarily look that at that as morally wrong. I think there's a difference between doing something that's, that's like that, like a white lie and stuff that's completely morally wrong. I think there's a big um, difference between the two. I don't really find it necessarily and this is just my own preference. I'll have a lot of people disagree with me, but I don't find it bad to drive impulse because every company does it like you said. Google, Apple, even Amazon, everybody does that where they say limited time only, 10 available. I don't think that's necessarily bad. I think where 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 the argument starts to get a little bit worse is like you're saying, if you're going to do stuff that's actually morally wrong where you charge somebody 10 extra dollars for shipping and for expedited shipping and you just don't expedite the shipping. Right. I think I think that's the big difference. So you don't have the ability to expedite the shipping because maybe it's coming from like China and there isn't an option for that product in particular. Don't lie. Like you can't expedite it. So don't sell someone on the expedited shipping. Maybe you right. can sell expedited processing, meaning that you'll move their order ahead of other the other customers that you have. That's a different type of offer. Right. Yeah. So, again, whatever it is that you offer, just make sure it's in alignment to something that you can actually deliver on. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Just don't be a bad person. Like people have, like I would say, people have bullshit detectors, like literally built into their minds, right? Everybody can pick up on it if, if you're lying to them. So don't try and go over the top. Like, sure, put one sales badge or trust badge on your on your product page, but don't overdo it. You don't need one at the tip top up in your up in your header. You don't need one directly below your price. You don't need one at the bottom. You don't need one on every one of your reviews, right? Like people are gonna know that. You're not like genuinely that real, right? If, if they've never heard of your name before, if you're not Amazon, and they know that you're not probably a massive Fortune 500 company. So there's no need to try. Yeah, and- like don't put Fortune 500 badge in your store if you're if you're just getting started. <laughs> like no, don't put the Inc. 1000, Inc. 500. Like don't don't do stuff yeah, like that. Don't do that. That's not <laughs> you. And I see stores that do that. And I, it makes me laugh every time because. Thinking back before I got into the actual drop shipping space, like I seen that stuff and, and uh, like I kind of, again, bullshit detector built in. I, I looked into them and I was researching. I'm like, I can't find anything on this company. I'm like, really? You're a, you're, you're a Fortune 500 company and I can't find you. I'm like, it's that easy, huh? But uh, <laughs> no, that's all good. That's all good there. Um, I want to go back to the Facebook ads thing because we got a bit. You don't really do much with Facebook ads anymore, right? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't do it. No, I've actually personally, I've never ran a Facebook ad. Like, I, oh. let me backtrack. Oh. I, boosted a, I boosted a post once. <laughs> no, I've run 100% of my e-com traffic on, uh, on search engines. Okay. And, and, and I actually didn't know that. I, I figured you did a little bit of Facebook, but no. agree that most people starting out, 
are only doing Facebook ads, Facebook driven. And that's ads. part of the reason why I never wanted to do Facebook when I first started years ago. Cause you know, I'm the type of, I got a little rebellion in me, right? Like I don't always like to do things the, the same way. Even if I know it's going to be more of a headache, I still won't do it. So when I got started a few years ago, I was just like, you know, especially with like high ticket products, I just intuitively thought I'm like, man, if I'm trying to get somebody to give me a thousand dollars, like, I just don't see how that could work with the platform. I'm like, the whole, like, you know, with Facebook, you know, you got the disruptive marketing, you got the copy, you got the different ad types, different ad sets, you know, in terms of objectives that you can set. I was like, you know, with Google, especially with shopping ads, I'm like, they, they really only trigger my products for one or two reasons. Either someone's looking for exactly what I sell or they're looking for something extremely similar to what I sell. Like, that's the only reason or way I get triggered. So I'm just like, for a thousand dollar and up product, it just makes sense for me to get in front of people that literally go and tell Google that they want to see me, right? So that, that was what my thought process was four years ago. And uh, yeah, that's why like anytime I pull up my ad account, like it, it would literally blow your mind because like my return on ad spend is just absolutely retarded. Like, you know, I just did a, a training this past week where I just had a recent week where I spent 300 bucks and made 30,000, you know, like I had to have stuff like that consistently. <laughs> so <laughs> ad account and show people that um, I'm doing it this weekend, actually. That's what I do at my workshops. So uh, it's crazy uh, that that type of stuff can happen with uh, with Google ads. I'm coming to one of them, by the way. Come come a little bit closer than, than Texas. I think that's where you're at right now. Down here in the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ben, that's a little bit far for me. Um, I got some guys down there in Texas, so I'm going to point them in your direction. Um, some guys I've mentored, some guys I'm pretty close with in, in Houston, actually. Is that where you're at? No, so I'm out in uh, Fort Worth. I have no idea. Texas is huge. I don't know where everywhere is in Texas. It's like his own country out here. <laughs> Something. I want to... I want, I think you're missing an opportunity here and I'm not saying do Facebook ads, but we can both agree that that's where the traffic's at, right? That's where a lot of people are going. Well, like if I know what most people would consider the number one, like media buyers in the world. Um, like the people that literally like they pay, like, so one of the guys, I won't say his name, but one of the guys that, uh, that, so I don't know if you guys know who Dean Graziosi is he just had a billion dollars in sales. Um, so the, he actually got, he paid this guy $20,000 to come in for eight hours to just teach his team how to like run better ad campaigns, uh, specifically on YouTube. And he spent like tons and tons of money on uh, YouTube. He's also responsible for helping to take Organifi from just seven figures a year. Uh, to, like they were just doing one or two million to $60 million a year. It's like that's my best friend. Like I literally call him, not my best friend, but he's a really good friend of mine. Uh, we'll probably be best friends here pretty in like another year or two, but I can just pick up the phone and call them. So I, I got people like that on speed dial uh, to where they, oh they to your point, um, have told me like to get on Facebook personally. So here's the personal reason why I haven't, because again, Ernest is a little rebellious, right? So here's one of the reasons why I haven't, as I transition into like 2020 is definitely going to happen, but I haven't, again, we talk about brand building, uh, being known in the marketplace, so forth and so on. So I went to a conference in uh, San Diego, I got invited to uh, be a panelist and I came on stage, person introduced me. And at the end of his introduction to me, he mentioned how I never ran traffic uh, or never spent any money on Facebook ads with the accolades I had. Yep. This conference had, I don't know, probably about 700, 800 people in it. The conference literally went crazy. like. Like they went bonkers. Like, like I got ambushed after the event. Like I literally took over the event because <laughs> they're like, you don't run Facebook ads. Like, how do you make money? That doesn't make any sense. This is crazy. And so I was like, holy crap. I guess, um, again, cause I'm, cause again, I'm the type of person, like I gotta be a hundred percent across the board. I, I can't be running Facebook ads and then telling people I'm not running Facebook ads. Right. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna just leave this Facebook ad thing alone while I'm getting paid, you know, on Google, Yahoo, AOL, DuckDuckGo, like places you search engine you guys probably never even heard of a new existed. That's where I'm gonna keep running traffic from. But um believe it or not, a lot of online searches still happen with Yahoo. I just found that out the other day. Blows my yeah, mind. Yeah, actually Yahoo's still in the top fifteen uh most visited websites in the world. Yeah. Bing's got one percent, DuckDuckGo's got less than one percent. And obviously, uh, Google has the majority of it. But even though Bing only has 1%, there's still millions of people using that. And the, and the traffic is just absolutely ridiculously cheap. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't get me started on Bing. <laughs> For an entire year, I was getting my CPC was like six cents a click. Um, and like my, I, I can't even tell you what my ROAS was because people would listen to this would just be like, oh my God, that, that doesn't even sound real. <laughs> what I was going to say, why I was bringing up Facebook is I'm not trying to tell you get on and start doing Facebook ads because I think, I don't think you should. I don't think you should do Facebook ads at all. Um, I do, but I don't think you should, but here's what I think you should do because you obviously do very, very well. You make a lot of money with your sales. Your, your traffic is worth a lot of money, right? What you need to do, if you're not doing it already, but you should get a pixel on your website and track that information because that's one additional way you can make money on your money because people will buy access to that data. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to yeah. be buy access to that one specific product. They'll buy access to um, the, the category or whatever you're selling in, right? Or the niche, yeah. like the automotive niche. They're going to buy, they're, they're willing to buy access to your pixel information just on the automotive stuff and you could make a tremendous amount of money on that like you want to get to that million dollar um a year hundred million dollar a year mark uh, a big thing you could do is put that pixel on your website set up custom conversions for each individual um like niche or product or whatever and then you could sell monthly access to that information because the, the mainstream way to do facebook ads now is or the main mainstream way to do shopify drop shipping is to use facebook ads and, and people are willing to pay for that stuff like like tremendously. And, and I'm recording this on my phone, otherwise I pull it up and show, uh, well, one of these cameras is my phone. So <laughs> I, I pull it up and I show you guys that um, my, one of the stores I'm selling right now has 72 leads on it. And each one of those leads, like people wanna buy the store because it's, it's, it's a profitable store. It makes like 20,000 a month profit. But the main thing that people are actually looking to buy when, when people sell their Shopify stores is they're looking to buy the, the data. They want to buy your data. Uh, right mm -hmm. now, living in the data race. So you got you got Apple that's winning it. You got Apple, you have Amazon, you have uh, even Microsoft is still in it. You got Facebook, Google, those companies, they're, they're tech giants and, and they understand it better than anybody right now that the world we live in is a complete data race. So if you have the most data, you're gonna win. So I think Ernest, what you should do and I'll even help you set this up because not, nobody does the custom conversion thing. That's another secret that I teach people, but literally nobody does it. We should set up custom conversions and pixels on your website just to track that information. And then we can segment, sell off your pixel information. And you could probably double your income. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah, I got the pixel installed. I don't have the custom uh, audiences and stuff set up, um, you know, with the custom conversions and stuff. So, yeah, it's actually, uh, I never thought about doing that, but that definitely should probably be something I should do long before I even get to 2020. So that's a really solid nugget. Yep, that, uh, that we won't get into it too much here because it's just a podcast, but I, I have videos over my YouTube channel um, that I'm recording and putting up um, of the custom conversions, and, and nobody does that little trick. But the, the custom conversion, when you when you can utilize that, that's really part of how you can make your ads blow up. Like a lot of people will do retarget marketing off of their whole pixel. And, and uh, some people listen to this um, might get it. That's why I'm going to talk about it. I don't know. I know you know <laughs> so it might be going over your head a little bit. But uh, when it comes to like the Facebook pixel, uh, a lot of people will retarget their traffic on their website. Um, off of purchase conversions, off of people who have purchased off their website as a broad. And if you're doing a general store, I mean, you have something in like the kitchen niche and, and the automotive niche, and it's all different stuff. So when you do that, you're not targeting quality traffic. Somebody in the automotive industry uh, niche that, that previously purchased from you, and you're gonna run ads targeting people similar to that for kitchen stuff, it's just not gonna work. So that's why you wanna segment up the custom conversions so you can actually, um, have your information segment. So that's yep. part of how you can really kill it with, with conversions on Facebook, but you can also take that grow information the way that you're currently doing it and sell that information off because that's what people are looking to buy. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, actually I have the custom conversions and stuff set up uh, specifically just kind of how you mentioned um, on the Google side of things. I just never thought about setting it up on Facebook because obviously I'm not running traffic over there. So now, yeah, honest, that's a good I idea. Did, I pulled that on the on the Google side myself, but I should. But uh, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's it's beautiful, beautiful over in Google Land. You know, it's way less it's it's way less chaotic 
um, and way more consistent in terms of like the algorithm changing and like new stuff happening. Like, you know, it's just, it's just not as crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not. Before we end this, because this is a long show here and we could talk all day because I, I, this is, this is something I'm passionate about. That's why I wanted you on here because I know you're passionate about it. We go round and round and round probably for hours. Um, yeah. At some point, but I want to, I want to ask you one more thing. Um, give us a little nugget. Give us a little, give us a little something. The people who made it here to the end of the hour long podcast, give them something that's, that's like a little secret to the, to the drop shipping game. Um, entice them to come over and actually follow you. So like, sell them on it. Like sell them that you're, you're actually <laughs> talking about. I know you do, but they might not know who you are. Give them something that's like really, really good, good stuff. Yeah, you know, the thing, you know, it's, it's funny because um, when when I actually I actually have people that tell me to do that, like sell me on dropshipping, sell me on e where I'm like, you know, for me, like that's like the worst thing to kind of tell me because like, I don't like to sell anybody like on on a new thing. Right now, if you have interest in a particular topic, if you really want to learn something of that nature, like, you know, my goal is to empower you to make educated decisions in the process of going on the journey of learning and then ultimately like taking action. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one of the biggest components about just e-com and drop shipping and the thing that I love about it, just like in traditional business is the fact that you don't have to play guessing games about creating success. So I know, um, you know, me and you, Zach, we talked about some stuff before we got on, you know, I'm going to drop those specific knowledge bombs, but like, you know, Zach has some very strategic ways on ensuring that when you select products that you're putting the best type of products on your website, to ensure when you go to launch, you'll create success. Right. And so I do that same exact process. Uh, a lot of bit differently from what he had mentioned to me specifically on his strategies, yep. but with high ticket e-com, right? So I don't play guessing games in, in this world. Like I can literally go and create a store, know that it's going to make money within the next couple of days if I want it, right? And know that I can scale that sucker to like multiple six figures a year and put it on semi-autopilot like we already talked about. And the only difference between me and you is the information that I have and then the application of the information. Right. And so one of the challenges that people have is that they don't get good quality information. You think that you're going to go to YouTube, go to Google. Yes, Zach is putting out phenomenal content. Yes, you'll find I'm putting putting out phenomenal content. But literally, like, you know, no one at the end of the day is really putting out exactly 110,000 percent of what it is that they're actually doing to literally like make tons and tons of money. Right. At the end of the day, that's just facts. Right. So with that being said, like you really have to like decide to make an investment in yourself, whether it's like enrolling to Zach's mastermind um, or mentorship or whether it's like buying a course out there, whether it's follow, deciding to follow me, like whatever the case is, like, you know, you got to get the right information from the right people. And then a part of that is actually applying it. But the biggest thing I can tell you is that you don't have to play guessing games in order to create a massively successful business. Personally, for me, I walk people through a process where you're going to build long-term wealth, long-term success uh, with your e-commerce businesses. Um, and to Zach's point, like liquidate some of the stores in the process of doing that, uh, selling it to like a private equity company, a hedge fund company, uh, if that's something that you want to do. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, like, you know, we got this process dialed in, we got this system locked in, like literally every day, whether someone's in my pay group or free group, like the content information, I literally had a guy yesterday that told me he just made thousands of dollars just being in my free group, just implementing one strategy on his business. Like they were struggling, having some challenges and he's just in my free group. And he's just like, yo, I just went and did this thing that you said to do Ernest. And it's literally made us thousands of dollars over the last couple of weeks. I'm like, wow, thank you for sharing that. Cause you know, I'm dropping stuff all the time and some people choose to share and some people don't. But at the end of the day, you know, the amazing thing is when you get around real deal people like myself, like Zach, uh, we're able to empower you immensely uh, and sometimes even more than some of the stuff that you're actually paying for out here in the marketplace. So, um, you know, if I had to leave anything, that would be what I would leave folks with. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. I apologize for saying sell people on it. I don't necessarily always mean like sell people like so you can like take their money. When I think sales. No, no, no. I don't think that too. Like I look at selling a service, right? Like you get paid in a direct reflection to the amount of service that you render, right? Whether it's through a digital product or physical product. So how do you determine what something is worth is based upon the value of what that thing is. So when you look at, again, whether it's a service or a digital product, it's based upon the amount of value that someone sees in getting the thing, right? 
So yeah, I don't ever, I don't ever look at sales from a negative perspective. Like honestly, like I think people should do more selling. Like, and I wish we had more time. We definitely don't. But like, that's part of the reason why I've literally made multiple. Like I've made, uh, and this is just on a small scale. I haven't even ran all the revenue. I just looked at like three businesses most recently. Three hundred and forty-five thousand dollars in profit to three out of the seven businesses that I have. Um, with just we're only halfway through twenty nineteen, right? Three hundred and forty-five thousand dollars in profit which is crazy, right? By literally just focus on how can I serve people more through, mul- through the multiple businesses that I have. Yeah, yep, exactly. And, and like I was saying, when I'm talking sales, I don't mean necessarily selling people on um, like giving you money. I'm talking like selling on your content of character, like selling people on the fact that you know what you're talking about. Like, I don't mean like taking their money. Like people th- associate sales with money and sales isn't just associated with money. That's what I meant by that. Like I wanted you to sell them. And I think you did a great job of that. And I think you did a great job of that. You, you, re- you got people, you got me sold. Um, I'm sure you can get everybody else sold on the fact that you're a person that knows what you're talking about. And uh, guys, I have Ernest, I have all of his social links and everything right down there in the description, uh, wherever you're listening from here, whether it's YouTube, whether it's on podcast, uh, wherever, I mean, go check him out. He's got like probably the, I think it's the fastest growing Shopify drop shipping group on Facebook right now. He puts out some content that's, that's probably more valuable than most people's courses and he gives it out for free. Uh, you got to check him out for yourself. Ernest, he's a guy that knows what he's talking about. That's the whole reason I got him on the show here. And I'm super pumped. He could take the time out of the day. Um, to be here with us because this is a guy that knows what he's talking about. Like I do pretty well in in drop shipping, but uh, I, I get I'm like a little I'm like a little schoolboy, all giggly, giggly and happy to have him on on the show here because he's way further ahead than where I'm at. Like I know people come to me and they think I'm like a top dog in the field, but Ernest is, is is like light years ahead of me, guys. There's not many people above him. Check him out. Join his group. Ernest, thanks for taking the time out out of your day here today, man. Good luck at your event tomorrow. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and plug all your stuff down there in the comments. If you got anything else you wanted to say, you can say it now, man. Just, uh, you know, just go out, put in the work, put in the grind and, uh, we'll see you at the top. Boom. We love it. Thanks for coming on, man. All right. Later. Later. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Honestly, I really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting. If you haven't been giving me any feedback, it really, really helps me. It shows the search engines that people are actually engaging with my content. So if you did like what I had to say today, um, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up and a like. If you didn't like what I had to say today, give me a big thumbs down or a dislike because either way, honestly, it helps the show out. It shows the search engines, like I said, that people are engaging with our content. And furthermore, if you really like what we have to say, uh, just make sure to subscribe here to the show. Subscribe to it, engage with the content, leave a, leave a comment, leave a like, share it with somebody else. Help us get the message out there, guys. This is a completely free show. I don't charge for any of my content. So all the help I can get, I really, really appreciate it. But make sure you stay tuned, guys, because next week's episode may be even better than this week's episode. So make sure you check it out. I record these in advance, so I definitely know that uh, every single week, uh, what's what's going to be coming, what's not going to be coming. But make sure you check this one out because next week's episode is really, really good, guys. I have some really good points to get in there. And I got a really special guest on there that you're probably not expecting. So make sure to go over and check that show out because I promise you, you're going to pull some insane keys out of that one, guys. But until then, we'll see you next time.